Uh, in this video, we'll talk through a simple but useful tool to assess a company's uh, performance and try to disentangle some of the drivers of that performance. It's known as the DuPont formula. So our starting place is a return on equity measure, something we've seen in previous videos. Uh, but what we do here is uh, decompose the net income over equity, return on equity, into three components, uh, each of which gives us some insight as to how a company is driving its return on investment or return on equity. Uh, so basically we're saying net income over equity equals net income over revenue, so profitability measure, times revenue over assets, times assets over equity. And when you, you know, cancel that out, you come up with a net income over equity. So what are each of these telling us? Well, a return on equity we've talked about in the past. It's a measure of the uh, profitability that a company is able to generate uh, based on the investment it's making. So we've, you know, we've talked about those measures in the past. Uh, the components in the DuPont decomposition, however, consist of net income over revenue. So that's basically profitability, how much uh, profit you're able to uh, derive from every dollar of revenue that you charge. Uh, revenue over assets, which is, is really a measure of asset utilization. So how much revenues can you squeeze out of every dollar of, um, of assets? Uh, and then assets over equity is a measure of financial leverage, right? So if you have high assets over equity, that means uh, your assets are high, your equity is low, which must mean you've taken on a, a lot of long-term debt. So the higher your financial leverage, uh, the uh, more debt that you have because, uh, you know, debt plus equity is equal to assets. And um, uh, the more levered you are as a company. And that is a way to, uh, as we saw in an earlier uh, video on return on invested capital with the Barton and Lisa example, uh, one way to drive your return on equity up is to take on a lot of debt. And the financial leverage component of the DuPont formula uh, illustrates that. Okay, so let's just talk this through in the case of the Carnival and Royal Caribbean example, why, why this might be useful. So uh, we saw that Carnival had a higher return on equity than Royal Caribbean, but why was that? Well, one way we can uh, get into that, uh, uh, get some insight into the uh, drivers of the differences in um, return on equity is through the DuPont formula. So we start with operating efficiency, net income over revenue. And what we see here is Carnival, uh, denoted in red, is consistently higher than Royal Caribbean. Okay, so that's, you know, that's consistent with then the analysis we did in the Carnival case where we, uh, we saw that Carnival's uh, cost advantage really, uh, operating cost uh, advantage really helped them to cons uh, uh, produce consistently higher uh, profit margins. Okay. Uh, then the next component is revenue over assets, which is, again, you know, how efficient you are in squeezing revenue, squeezing sales out of your assets. Uh, and here it looks like a wash. I mean, it's pretty much a tie. Some, sometimes Carnival's doing a little better, sometimes Royal Caribbean's doing a little better, but not much of a gap there. And again, that's consistent with the fact that both of the two companies, uh, they charge very similar prices. Carnival has slight edge, uh, but very small, uh, and both of them ran at, uh, you know, very close to 100% capacity utilization. So here they were kind of running neck and neck. This didn't differentiate their uh, return on in, um, investment. And then the final component, assets over equity, which again is a measure of financial leverage, what we see is Royal Caribbean is doing better here. Uh, and, and better, I, I, I put in air quotations, because what that means is they're boosting their return on equity by taking on more debt, driving the equity down. Um, that can be good news for shareholders, but it does uh, mean the company uh, increases its risk of uh, financial distress, right? So if you get into a situation like COVID where you have low capacity, you have a lot of debt on the balance sheet, you have to pay the, that interest, you have to pay back that principal, and um, uh, that reduces a firm's resilience. So if you think back to the video on balance sheet resilience, one of the ways you um, uh, increase your resilience is by having low debt. So uh, so the, the, the basic story we're seeing here is that uh, Royal Caribbean and Carnival are doing an equally good job of um, uh, you know, driving at revenue out of their assets. Carnival is consistently more profitable, and Royal Caribbean is trying to close the gap by, uh, in terms of return on equity, by put, putting more uh, debt on its balance sheet, which, yes, it increases your return on equity, but it, it can be a dangerous game because it decreases your resilience. 